Well, day number, what's today, day three in two. Idaho, two-ish and a half, 2.5. 2.5. And we have a new company in the truck with us today. Yes. It's killing time. Mr. Gritty himself, who is, oh, there we go. <laughs> Grim the leprechaun. <laughs> <laughs> Shimmy buckles. I am not short, and if I hear another one. Oh, that wasn't a short joke. It was just, you know, the whole leprechaun thing. Oh, okay. Is this sure. wallet? Yeah. Uh, get some light back there. Ooh, we got dollar. Casey with us That's today. Hi. We uh, we wore Tommy out yesterday. Welcome to Destination Elk, everyone. Yeah, welcome. You tried to kill him yesterday. <laughs> we did. And he did well. Oh, look at that. That's pretty awesome. Okay, let's use, let's use this as a time for education for those who may be coming from Flatland. What's a Flatland prep? Oof. I don't know. It's a uh, walk on an incline. Yeah. Just be prepared. Be prepared to hate life. You'd be prepared to hate Corey if you hunt with Corey and you come from Flatland. We did almost seven miles yesterday and covered four thousand vertical feet up and down. And Tommy came from fifty-four feet elevation. Yeah. We're at. I think we topped out at eighty-six hundred. So. He was not uh, doing too well on the walk out last night. I'll just say this, altitude masks do not work. No. <laughs> <laughs> but we're heading out and we uh, got into a hornet's nest of elk yesterday and we're gonna go back and stir them up today. And Brian and Casey are going to show us their shooting skills. Hell yeah. It's daylight, we're heading up the mountain. Got a couple clowns with us today, so it's gonna be a clown show. Oh, hey, Brian. Hey, how are you? Uh, if there's anything you want me to show you, you know, call for you, you can just let me know. Uh, I will. Teach you a few things. I'll let you know for sure. Been doing this a while, so. Yeah, what is this, 21 days now you've been doing it? This season? Wait, wait. Four days, plus two, <laughs> plus one, plus one other. Uh, our, our friend Tommy from Texas took the morning and uh, was gonna go for a little bit easier method of hunting this morning, just wanted to sit somewhere. So we grabbed Brian and Casey and we are gonna run up the mountain. They said they are not afraid to climb the mountain. Isn't that right, Casey? You did say that, right? We fear no mountain. <laughs> we conquer mountains. We conquer mountains. <laughs> We're gonna go and bugle in some elk. Maybe. I don't know. Brian looks like he's kill. Got the knife, <laughs> rangefinder, binoculars, camera, headlamp, which is important in the daylight. <laughs> you may need that in a few hours. <laughs> Is that door Mm. 
dang time. There's two of you with bows, right? We need to find a place where there's two bugling. <laughs> we'll walk past that one. All right, we got our first bugle.
makes it higher. Yeah. I thought I heard pass through. It sounded very good. Happened kind of quick. Yeah, that was tough, man. I was like, well, if he gets any further, if I had set up on that side of the tree, it would have been a lot easier. Yeah. It's just dead branches everywhere. I couldn't move on this. If I had time, I would have scraped a little spot clear so I could shift around without making so much noise. I'd like to see him fall over, though. It was tough. Those trees were in the way. I, I know I... Did you hear it hit me? I didn't hear it hit anything prior to hitting him. Okay. They looked small enough. It looked like I had a window. I looked at my 20. And it didn't look like I would hit anything. But it took a while to find a spot. But I was at full draw for a while. I was, yeah. I was trying to steady for that shot. I feel like I could have aimed higher. Maybe too low on the... Talk to me, Goose. Okay. I'm shooting through all these branches, but I have good window, I felt. It sounded like you hit two things. I hit him. Okay, just you where? No. Maybe I was in and out then. Like see blood on his right side, which would have been where I don't know if I hit him low or how far? Uh, he was 32 yards. Yeah. It looked like he was right on top of you. He looked farther through the other tree. We were on the we were in the bad spot. I thought he was just come right down this trail. We did too. But he didn't he cut high and yeah. I was out behind a thing like this. But he didn't look that hurt. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, uh, Donnie fast. Donnie was like, he was like, yeah, dude, I don't think, I don't think you, uh, I didn't hear anything except the impact on the elk. Didn't hit any branch. That's what I heard. I heard. Uh, thump. We were trying so hard to get another arrow, and he was 47 yards from us. I know, he just crested. I yeah. thought about chasing him. But... No, he went to the top and kept going. Did he? Ran. I, watched, I watched him go to the top. He was 101 yards. In case he was trying to end up in the another 40 yards and cut to the right. Because that pulled her off for a while. Because when he went by a tree up there, the thing, it was just so many branches. Yeah. I would have never thought you to come across that open. Especially with the wind coming down. I'll go look for this arrow if he's way up there. There's boot. There's meat on it. Low leg. There's just meat. Brisket. I thought it hit low. Hmm. It just kind of went poop, through something. And then he didn't look all that hurt. Good blood, but it's 
it's muscle blood. It's that low brisket. He'll bleed for a hundred yards good and stop. He didn't look hurt. You got to watch him go on. And I right. looked through binoculars all the way up there. I never did see blood, so it had to be low. It smells like urine. Looks like I hit him in the maybe in the back of the leg, like the meat of the leg there, or the belly. Yeah. Well, when I saw the arrow, it looked like it was tracking right toward, right toward the vitals, and then. It just looked like it went low. I told Donnie, I'm like, I think I hit low. Kind of assumed a low hit. Blood trail is kind of matching that. Just hit low that armpit area, brisket area. <clears throat> and a lot of muscle meat there, and they'll bleed pretty good for. There's a lot of muscle. 100 or 200 yards, but there's not enough to get them sick or get them dizzy. Heels up and they carry on. The there's a bugle up there. As long as there's blood, we're gonna follow it just to make sure. Make sure. But as of right now, we've gone 150 yards, and it's doing exactly when he stops. There's pretty good little, I wouldn't even say pool, but area where it drips. But it's already starting to lighten up here, which is real watery over there. Yeah. So we keep going as long as we can follow blood and tracks. He's gone straight uphill the whole time, which again, body cavity, they usually, I won't say never, but he wasn't he looking to sound sick. right either. It was like, don't, yeah. it just didn't pop him. Find a bullet. 
bed right up here. Or we can do this all day. Roller coaster of emotions. Yeah, it is. It's a roller coaster for sure. You know, I, we looked at the video. I hit him uh, a little low and, well, look very low and back. Uh, he's quartering away a little bit. Um, as I fold her off for a while, I was pretty shaky. But then, uh, then I settled on him and took the shot. Um, he may have been a few yards further. So, uh, I mean, I expected to hit a little low, but probably not that low. But can't explain the left to right. Um, maybe hit a branch, maybe it was me. But that's hunting, man. I mean, I. You try and you try, and uh, sometimes you you're a, you're the Michael Jordan of archery, and sometimes you're not. Get on a playground. So, but uh, hopefully he goes back into all these rocks because he's really easy to track in those rocks. rock face got to the top side hill for about 100 yards in turn and was just plowing tracks straight downhill and uh, tracks led to this there's a series of wallows here we've got blood right here leading into it Hasn't been freshly wallowed in necessarily, but definitely came here to cool off. Make it really hard. There's just wallow after wallow after wallow down this draw in all sorts of water. Not really sure where he went from here. We're over six miles in on the track. Been on it for almost nine hours. Well, we tracked the bull down to the wallow. Found where he came out of the wallow. Had two or three drops of blood on this side of the wallow. That's it. What do you think? Sadness, despair. I think we gotta call off the search. We've covered 7.7 .7 miles, nine and a half hours. Blood the whole way until just 100 yards or so. It's insane. All over the end of our search. Do you think he uh, got mud in there and stuff? 
probably, that's the only thing I can think of is got in the wallow and stopped the bleeding. Because we had good blood until the wallow, which is crazy. Seven miles of blood. He hasn't laid down. Hasn't laid great. down. And it's not like a drop of blood in 40 yards and other. It's a continuous stream of blood for seven miles. Had to have just clipped him. Just low, right on the belly there. But, I think we've done all we can. Yeah, we did our due diligence. <laughs> and then some. Yeah. No, I'd love to keep following if I could. Yeah, we've spread out and gridded, circled, looked everywhere, just trying to find a track, blood, anything. This ground's pretty difficult to find tracks in. Darn wallow. Gave us the slip there. Yeah. So I think we're gonna call it a day. Start hiking out. It's almost six o'clock. We've gone almost ten miles from the truck. be another late night long hike out. Well, another rough day. Yes, it was. Another long slow day yeah just well, action was good to start with but action started out hot and then uh the rest of the day was didn't turn out like we wanted moving no no tommy took the day and uh had a little bit of a lighter hunt just went and set up a little ground ambush blind next to a wallow and uh hunted there and so donnie and i went out got to spend some time with our good friends brian call and casey harbertson and uh, man, action from the beginning. We went into the same area where we were yesterday and that bull came in on a string. In fact, that's probably has to be part of the problem. Yeah. He came in too fast and he was five or 600 yards away when he first bugled and we were standing there talking strategy. Okay, the wind's coming down, let's get on this ridge, move up here. And all of a sudden he bugles like 120 yards away and it was full scramble. Casey and I are running backwards, trying to get to a place where we can set up and call. Donnie and Brian are jumping down and, and picking a setup where they think the bull's gonna come through. And we plopped down and looked up and the bull's standing there on the hillside already. He yeah. came at a run. He had to have been bolting in, he was breathing. Yeah. Just, we didn't get a, a second chance to say, oh, let's set up there, <laughs> set up there. It was, uh, we just had to set up where we were, and there was obstacles, and yeah. Brian had It just a, wasn't ideal. It was uphill. There were limbs everywhere. The bull's moving across. You know, he knows something's down below, so he keeps looking down at Brian and Donnie. We call and get his attention. He'll take a couple steps, and it wasn't ideal, but uh, he finally stepped into a, a decent opening, quartering away a little bit, and Casey was back with me. And he had his bow and had an arrow knocked in about five more yards. He would have had probably a 30 or 35 yard shot. Uh, but he stepped into an opening. Brian got a shot and uh, felt he had made a, a good shot. Anchored in, you know, distance was, thought he had it nailed down. And uh, we didn't know if he hit. It didn't sound like a hit. We didn't hear the thump or anything. But uh, we went up and tracked the tracks up the hill 20 or 30 yards and found a drop of blood. So we knew he had... Found the zero, passed yeah. through. So. Yep. Yeah. So with that, you know, we just we didn't know what kind of a shot he had. Looking on the camera, we couldn't tell where he hit, and uh, the blood was just drop, drop. Not good, consistent blood as far as being a lot of blood and, and giving us hope that he had shot it in the lungs or something. On that initial runoff, when he was running, we were only find, finding the drops. Yeah. And as we got up farther we had pretty good blood 
Yeah, we actually tracked and ran out of blood after an hour. Yeah. So we gridded around there, made some circles, and finally said, you know what, let's, let's back out. Let's go over and see if we can get another bull bugle and chase it for an hour or two. Let this bull have time to bed down. We, we just didn't know where he was shot. So we didn't want to take a chance if he was shot in the guts of bumping him and having him running and not having blood. So we backed out, got another bull bugling, and as we're moving in on this other bull, look down, and there's blood. So we ended up, the bull had circled around, came back in through where we were now chasing the other bull, and so we got back on the blood trail. And did that again. Went for another half hour or so, the blood kind of phased out, and another bull bugling, so we started chasing it. And I kid you not, we're going 90 degrees now away from where the blood trail had been going. And we'll walk along, look down, there's blood. So. As we're picking up this blood trail inadvertently, it's finally been an hour and a half now. We get back on it, and I think we ended up trailing it for nine and a half hours and never got more than just that drop, drop, drop of blood. It just it didn't seal up. But after seven miles and nine hours of tracking, we kind of realized this wasn't a, a fatal hit. We just didn't know where it was hit. The bull ended up going into a wallow and wallowing and there was no blood from there. So long day. Um, I think our, our conclusion is he hit low and yeah. you know, you just clip that brisket. There's a lot of blood in there. Um, somewhere he hit low and it was able to just keep dripping. And as the bull walked, you know, maybe hit in the corner of the pocket of the leg or something, but kept it open and had a long blood trail. It's hard when they go into a wallow like that too. It's we just didn't know where he would exit from or anything like that. And yeah, seals up the blood with mud. And, and Brian did a podcast. Yeah, gritty podcast. So Brian and Casey did a follow-up podcast on that hunt. And uh, I think it's podcast 384. 384. So if you want to check that out and listen to Brian and Casey talk about it a little bit more, uh, gritty podcast 384, yep. check that out. So. No, another day, another day in the books. Yeah, and actually on the way out, right at dark, we had a bull screaming his head off. Yeah. Actually came in, just wouldn't quite commit. So I think we've got a plan for uh, Tommy for tomorrow. I'll take him, see if we can find that bull. Uh, had a great time hunting with Brian and Casey. We've spent a ton of time together, but never got to elk hunt together. Yeah. So it was fun to spend a day on the mountain with them. Uh, yeah, it should be good. Yeah. Tomorrow should be good, I yeah. would hope. <laughs> so, don't forget today is the last day to use the discount code Black Friday on the University of El Canine online course. It's going to save you 30%. So, after today, it goes back to regular price, and uh, today's the day. So, if you've been sitting on the fence thinking about signing up, do it, pull the trigger, 30%, use the code Black Friday, and in addition to 30%, Donnie's gonna send you a free Destination Elk t-shirt. So leave your aren't wearing one, but. leave your color choice gray, blue, or grayish blue, or gray or blue. Let's call it gray. Gray no confusion. Or gray green. or green. Those are your two options. And your shirt size. Yeah. Just in the order notes, we don't sell the shirts on the uh, the same platform that we sell the online course on. So when you sign up for the online course, just leave a a note there in the order comments area and we'll uh, get those shipped out to you. So probably need to give away something. I should go with something different. Yeah. We didn't give away a mug. mug. Yeti mug. The little ramblers are pretty cool. So 14 ounce again out of focus <laughs> but it's got the logo there. It's in focus here. It's out of focus close up. Destination Elk logo on the Yeti. 14 ounce Rambler mug. We'll give one of those away and we'll give away another bugle tube diaphragm combo. So two winners today. Just leave a comment down below. Join us tomorrow. Back we'll at it. Take Tommy back out. And Got two days left to try to fill a tag. And yep. Tommy's hopefully rested up and ready to yeah. attack the mountain again. <laughs> All right, thanks for the comments, everybody. It's yeah. uh, great reading through those. Yeah. Keep them coming. Thanks for joining us.